Okay, Mark chapter 4, verse 1. And he began to teach. Now, this is the same man. This is Jesus Christ. He preaches and he teaches. Not all preacher and he's not all teacher. You've got to have the right balance in your ministry. By the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great group, excuse me, a great multitude. And this is what your, this is what your, most of your churches, they want this great multitude. They want this great mass of people. They want a mega church without the mega. And you got to ask yourself, with all these mega two of people coming to Jesus, Matthew and Mark so far studying, most of them are coming to Jesus for something. They got an ailment. They got troubles. They got medical issues. And now, if you got the worldly religion, all are going to heaven. Okay, that's fine, but not all. Jesus says, "Straight is the gate that leads to life, and few, the few of these multitude will be in heaven. The rest will be in hell." So, the great big numbers, all are welcome. Okay, here they are. All are welcome, not all going to heaven. And there are people who go to church because they want something. I was in a church one time, and and they call you know because I because I had a home church. They call you up. They want your medical. They want their their electric bill paid. They want their water bill paid, and they want money. And on, and you just tell them no. And I, I was in a church one day. And they said, "Well, if you come to church this Sunday, we'll take a special collection for you." All right, they came Sunday, to, took a special collection, and then you didn't see them no more. <laughs> so they entered into a ship, sat in the sea on the ship, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by prayer. So, okay, what would Jesus do? He got on the he got on the beach. He got in the boat, sat down in the boat, and that was his pulpit. They're not having sunrise service. So, you know, they, well, you know, street preaching or the public preaching. Or that. Uh, there's no building here. He's not on a wharf where the, where the building stretches out on the sea. He's in a boat. It's in the public. They're on the seashore. They're on the beach. He's using the water as he could. It. Uh, uh, oh boy, I was going to say the word, and then the word went. For a sound. And his church has spent all this money for this great sound system. Yet, the church ain't listening. He taught many things by parables. And, well, Mark is only going to tell us about a couple. Matthew told you about a couple, and John says there are many things that, that were said and done by Jesus that are not recorded. Here we go. And said unto him in his doctrine, his teaching, that's what doctrine means. Hearken. Behold, red letter, this is what Jesus is saying in the boat to the people. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. He's a farmer. This is was something that Adam would have done. This is something that Cain would have done. Sowing seed. Mary Magdalene thought when she saw Jesus, thought she saw the gardener. And it came to pass as he sowed, throwing seed out, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, immediately sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded another. Notice this sower, he, he's not specifying a particular spot where the east is throwing that seed out everywhere and anywhere. Don't 
focus your your thing on one specific thing uh, uh, of the gospel everywhere, anywhere. You're in the grocery store. You're you're in the car. You're talking to people here. You're at work. You're you're in the hospital. You, they're here everywhere. Put it all out. Other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that spread up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. He said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the 12 disciples asked him of the parable. So what we just read, verse 9 to 9, that's it. That's what he told the people and other things. They don't get what the parable meant, verses 11 on. Because their ears are hard. They've already, we, we've got three chapters in Mark, and the, the, the people of the church didn't want them. They wanted to get them. The scribes want to get them. The Pharisees want to get them. They don't want to hear him. They don't want to accept him. They don't believe who he is. They rejected him. So they're not going to come to the scriptures because they don't have a full Bible. They're not going to come to the scriptures. They're not going to go to the synagogue and get the word of God and hear the word of God, what he's going to say with their hard heart. And you can fight them as many times. They can come as many times to church as they will. If their heart is hard and their heart is rejecting God. Their heart believes in evolution. They don't believe in the Bible. They, they can come to church all they want. They're going to wake up one day dead in hell. I went to church. Church doesn't save you. Church inviting is not the invitation, is not the seed. Well, look at that. I want to give you a moment to realize what the body comes so you can turn this off now so you don't have to hear what the truth is. And when they're alone about him, the 12 ask him, say, what did that mean? He said unto him, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That's the spiritual kingdom. That's the, you know, that's not the, the, the I can touch kingdom. This is the kingdom of the Holy Ghost. You're never going to see the Holy Ghost. You're never going to see God. He's a spirit. You're never going to see the new birth. Now you can see the result of the new birth. It's a mystery. And you're not going to get revelation and mystery. You don't go out there to the bookshelf, the bookstore, you know, the mystery and all this and, and, and the parable. And the, if you're unsaved, you're not going to get it because the unsaved can't receive the Holy Spirit. If you are saved and, and you choose to reject something in the Bible, listen, you choose to reject it, that, that Jonah died and went to hell, you're not going to get no revelation. You choose to have your Easter rabbits and bunny rabbits and Santa Claus and all that, you're not going to get no new revelation because you rejected the Bible. But unto them that are without, all things are done in parables. Without what? Without God. You got to be in God. Many of those people, they don't care about God. They don't care about the Messiah. In, in, in a few years, they're going to be saying, crucify him. Get rid of him. The seeing they may see and not perceive. Listen, you can see a lot of things and not understand what you saw. Hearing they may hear and not understand. All right, come to church, come to church, come to church, come to church. And they may hear the message, they may hear the message and hear nothing and have no understanding. It's not... Invitation to church. I'm trying to get this out because because you can invite them to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Come to my church. Come to my church. Come, we're, we're having pot rolls. We're gonna have a bingo. We're having eggs. We're having everything. Come to church. And then Saturday night they die and go into hell, saying, "Well, hey, I, I was invited. To, I had church." But I had no gospel. I said I had church. I had no gospel. Now it'd be a lot different. You tell Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, come to my church, come to my church, and then you sit down and say, "Listen, 
The gospel of Jesus Christ suffered. He died, was buried for you. You are the sinner. He's the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. The Bible says you must believe on him to be saved. Without Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. And he dies Saturday night, ends up in hell you know, because I rejected the Savior. Not because I didn't go to church. They may go to church and still not understand. And at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. There are some people that can go to church 365 days in the year, 366 in leap year. They can do it every day of their life and still die and not know God. Because their heart is wrong with God. They're not searching out to God. They reject God. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So he's talking, turn to the site. Wait, you don't understand this parable? All right, here we go. The sower sold the word. He's going to say, the parable we just learned, he's going to, he's going to explain. The, the parable is the sower, that's the guy who puts the seed out. He sowed, that's, that's the verb, the word, the word of God. Later in Mark 16, going to say the gospel. It does not say the sower went and invited to church. It does not say the sower put out a movie. It didn't say the sower, I let my light shine. It did not say the sower, I let my salt. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine. It's about the W-O-R-D. And you better realize, because if you don't have a King James Bible, you don't have the W-O-R-D. So you better have the right word of God. Because if God has a word, so does Satan. And when I get my, today, you get the little fluffy, little red, red rainbow kind of, you know, my little pony kind of little crappy Bible like that. And takes out the blood and takes out what Jesus said. My daughter's looking at me. Then you don't have a Bible they can witness the death, burial, and resurrection. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And there are Bibles that remove the blood. There are Bibles that remove the, the Ethiopian eunuch saying, I believe. No, they throw them right in the water. You throw them right in the water, you're going to drown to death. Wanting in hell a little drop of water that they were baptized in. You better proceed be to have the word of God. Mark chapter 4. These are they that by the wayside, they're on the side of the road, where the word is sown, not the movie, not the principal, not your church, not your pastor, not your light. But when they have heard, heard the word, they don't hear your light. Satan, that's not a good thing. Satan cometh immediately. I mean, he's not waiting. He's doing it immediately. And the very first thing what you got to learn from this parable is when you're going to go out with the word, you're going to go out witnessing you're going to go out preaching the gospel. You're going to go out and tell lost people about Jesus Christ. Uh, you better learn right now. Always take a partner with you. You better learn there's a threesome. There's you, hopefully somebody. Listen, I know sometimes where no one go. I know people go and knock on the doors and they didn't have nobody go with them. But they do. And I know that they had somebody from church. They partner up and they went out. 
I know groups of, pe groups of people, they'll go street preaching. But you're not the only ones there. You read for sure as Satan comes in after you. So another thing is, when you're going to go out witnessing, you're going to go witnessing the word, you're going to go preach the gospel, not your church. You better rest assured and believe that there is a Satan. You better believe yourself that Jesus Christ suffered and died and buried and was rose. You better put that faith in yourself first. Then you better realize your number one enemy is Satan. And when you invite him to church and lie to singing church aid today, Jesus Christ is standing outside the door of the church knocking. Satan's inside, so all are welcome. You're inviting them to Satan. Man, someone just hated with me for saying that about the church. Many churches have Satan as their preacher. 2 Corinthians 11. So rest assured, you're sowing of the seed. Now, we had this happen last the other day at the big Walmart. <clears throat> we go in there and we take gospel tracts in the very next bag. We put a gospel track in before we leave. Oh, we needed help from the woman. She came over, helped us out, and saw it and took it out of the bag and threw it in the garbage. Well, we put another one in there. <laughs> we used to have one part of Walmart where we went and checked out, self checkout. The woman knew who we were, knew what we did, and we we had to go to another station. Because every time we went there, she was looking to take that gospel track out. So, and, and you got door knocking ministry and realize, you know, you got gospel tracks out and the door closes. And hey, hey look at that. The gar and the gospel track ends up in the garbage. You're out preaching in the street or you're passing out gospel tracks, you know, people on the street and you know you gather at the end of the day and say oh we had a good and you look on the ground there's a bunch of gospel tracks you we we do that well we used to do before my health the daytona 500 here we get plenty of gospel tracks out we had whole teams working with gospel track and we start packing up we look in the garbage can and it's just filled that's satan so another aspect we get from this parable is not everybody's going to get saved. Not everybody's going to receive the gospel. Learn that. Know that. See, there are people who go out there, well, everybody's going to get saved. Whatever ministry I'm doing, everybody's going to get saved. No, 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 no. Because Satan's going to come and he's going to take the word. Oh, you know, we invite him to church. And the pastor gets up there, he tells a cute little story, or he tells a, hum a humorous joke, and they remember the story, they remember the joke rather than Jesus. When I went to school, when I went to institute, what my my instructor told me just very little of the jokes. Use jokes as sparingly as you can. That was sown in their hearts. I'm not saying church can't do that, but <clears throat> that's not what we're told. We're not told to fight in church. So very first thing is realize the very first seed, Satan comes along, he just steals. Birds. Now go back to chapter four. Go well, soon, chapter four. Look at verse 4. The fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Rest assured, birds in your Bible, and you may hear birds on the video every once in a while, birds are a type of Satan. Because we're going to come into this parable as we go into the scholars. You're going to find, and the birds of the air lodged in the tree, and the bird. Uh -huh. So if we're talking about the kingdom of God and, and, and they're birds, they're still representatives of Satan, though he is chained up in the millennium. Because when he's unchained, he gathers a whole army. Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, on this earthly ministry has full of devils. 
and birds. So that's the very first problem you got with soul winning, Satan. And these are they likewise with sown on stony ground. Now we're going to start getting to are they really saved or are they not saved? And the main aspect is it's between them and God, God and them, Satan and them, and Satan and them against Satan. Those only ones that know true salvation is God, Satan, and you. But James does say we can we can judge by the by the fruits. Problem is the stony ground and the thorny ground. Produce no fruit. I can think of somebody right now. That there, there's a profession of salvation, though I've never heard it out of his lips. And I look at his life, and I don't know how I pray for that guy. I believe the guy's lost. Someone else I know believes the guy's lost. But when I pray, I say, Lord, and I'm like, Lord, uh, there's other instances in their life, and they're. Uh, I think they're not saved, but Lord, only you know. See, the Bible says we're not to judge people, yes. But Paul writing to Christians, he says we can judge the things. Now listen, if you say you're saved and you go to the Catholic Church and you're a, you're a hugging the Mary statue and you get, you're kissing a rosary bee and you're calling him father. You're going into the confessional booth and the Pope is the only one and Mary's Andrew Bader's uh, of sin and all that. I can, I can safely say you're not saved. You're religious. And again, I can, you can say, you know, you're saved. You go to the Catholic Church and, you know, you sit there and you don't partake and you're just listening and, you know, you have a skepticism of what's going on. I mean, all right, I could say, say, you know what, you, maybe there is. You believe in the virgin birth. You believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. You, all right, I could say, okay, maybe you are saved. You're just in the wrong place. These are they that likewise sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, again, the word, immediate, notice everything immediately, receiveth it with gladness, okay, you tell them, and you tell them the word, like, oh, wow, great, hallelujah, emotional experience, okay, and have no root in themselves, not the word. All right, let's say they got saved, and they just, I can't do it. I can't live it. So endure but a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, and you're a Christian, you go to church all the time, you can't come to family reunion, uh, you're one of them Jesus freaks, you read your Bible, you Bible thumper. What? Our church is not good enough for you anymore? Who do you think you are, you holy roller? Look at that, he reads the Bible at lunchtime. Arises for the word's sake. The word, no, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Immediately again. They are offended. And we are in the generation of, of the offense of offended. I get offended because I'm offended because of offense that you are offended at me. I told my daughter the other day, she goes, well, Dad, you, I don't care if they get offended. They get offended. I'm going to make them more offended. I'm going to drive them home, make them take a red and blue pill. And then call their psychiatrists. I don't care. I am who I am, what I am, and I'm going to speak the truth, and I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stick the knife in more. You're such a panty waist. You don't belong out in the public. You don't belong in my 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 sphere of my bubble. <laughs> don't come in my bubble, because I'll burst yours. 
He can find it for the stupidest thing. You know, he, he won't make a cake for us sodomy. Well, you go start your own bakery. Well, you know, you know, our race of people. Then you go start your own. Get yourself in your own boat. Go over to another place. Start your own country the way you want to do and leave ours alone. Because ours was built upon the, the, the Geneva Bible. Boy, we come a long way. We come far from the Geneva Bible. And the well, fact is that our own people on the, on the boat got congregationalists and started going against God. They were the new Jerusalem. They were the new Israelites. But that's a whole other story. But offensive. Now, so, okay, they, they have no root in themselves. And because people pick on them and call them names and stuff like that, because of the word, they endure. And then they quit. Are they saved? They're unsaved. What are you going to say? I've known many well fine Christians. I know one guy, because this pastor, this church, said something to him on, and he never went back to church, went to any church. And, Well, the pastor said this, the message, or these people said that. And they never go back. My grandma told me with the Baptist church they went to, that the woman took her aside and you know, told her, said, you know, the way her children are being raised on that, she got so offended. She never went back to the Baptist, never went back to any church, and her children grew up wrong. Some are children, and, and, and her in-laws were then, okay, maybe there's salvation, maybe there's not. I know one of her children definitely probably is not in heaven and will be in heaven. And maybe her herself, I don't know. What about her? I don't know. She was in the Baptist church. Church that was King James and went any Bible you could. You know, uh, what can I do? What can I judge? You say, well, about Christians and all that, they're not in church no more. Find me a scripture that says in the Bible, just because you don't go to church, you're lost. I didn't go to church for, for, for much time. I still passed out gospel tracts. My wife and I, we were kind of left at church because of a great misunderstanding. We still witnessed. We, we had one of the greatest public ministries together. I taught the I taught the family the Bible. We were kicked out of another church because because misconception that you know he was the ruling throne. I mean, don't touch your Lord's anointed, and and you're not allowed to go in our church. And we we started a whole church and all that. And we only had our family sitting in the, in the dining room. And a few times we had people come and visit. I mean, are we saved or not? What if, and by chance, here we are, 2000. What if, give the code, all, most of the churches are all closed. What if they've been afflicted or persecuted in a church wrongly? That the church and the pastor was wrong and the people right, and they're not in church no longer because there are no churches. And they have to resort to, if they even have the possibility of Facebook or YouTube. What I'm trying to say is you can't say, oh, these people are not saved. But there's also a thing is there's no fruit. But, okay, to say a Christian doesn't have fruit and we're to produce fruit, and Jesus says, wherefore, by their fruit you should know them. At the judgment seat of Christ, if there's no fruit, that doesn't mean you go to hell. That means you just get no crowns and no rewards. And there's plenty of lies to see in Christians today. There's a plenty of that. Listen, there are people out alive to see in church. They, they go to a church, they go up to the altar, they say this prayer, and they die and go to hell. Easy believism. And they were more for a mark for that church and a tally mark in the books and the records of that church than the Land's Book of Light. So to say that the people in verse 16 and 17 are not saved, well, I don't know. 
They heard the word, immediately receive it. They believed. They took it. That's a lot better than many people I've met on the, on the street ministry where they receive the word of God and they, you know, they give me the royal salute, tell me I'm foolish, tell my church don't do that, you, 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 you're driving people away. Much better if somebody comes up with, with a bottle of water. I remember, I remember we were in Norris one time. We had there, and, and a woman come up out, out, out of Dunkin' Donuts. She goes, you know, it's a hot day. I see your son and the, my, your daughter and you. And they didn't know my son was over there. And she gave us both an a, a ice-cold bottle of water. Was she saved? I don't know. <laughs> I've only had three or four people give me an ice-cold bottle of water. She couldn't say much. She was still, she was on the clock. She could have lost her job. Had one guy pull up. He, he went, he went to the store. Got, I mean, he must have found the most, got the water in the back of the, of the freezer. And went and got me a sandwich and everything. I enjoy what you're doing. Is he in the church? That's not the question. What's he doing with the word? There are people in third world countries. They don't have a church. And the church they do, you can't invite them to because they're underground. You come to church Sunday, and they go to church Sunday, and they had to move because, because the government, and you can't find the church. Well, you just lost your salvation because you couldn't find the church. What are you talking about? Shut up. Preach the gospel. They have no root in themselves. They don't want to stand up. They don't want to take the persecution and affliction. This is what they, I mean, and these are sown among thorns. Such as hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, and the cares of the world. The car insurance, the, the house payment, the job, the school, the children, the baseball team, the Broncos, the hillbillies, the, you know, the stock market. Who's going to be president? Who's not going to be president? And the deceitful of riches. Used car salesmen. <laughs> Politicians. Does this grocery store charge you more? Uh, there's a store, I'm not going to give the name, but they said that they, 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 there was one product, I'm not going to say it is, but it was in four different places in the store. It was on the shelf where it should be. It was on it on an end cart, as you know, as a sale item. And it was in this part because it belongs with these items. It was in four different areas, and they went up to the self check and scanned that item individually four times and came up with four different prices. There's a store now. They're charging you if you're going to start using bags. That's a seafood witness. Put the price of the bag in there. As a matter of fact, the price of the bag is already in. How about gas station? They raise the price of gas, then the truck comes Wednesday. Uh, the price of gas you just raised wasn't in the truck. That was already in the price of the previous truck. And the lust of other things entering in. College football down here in Florida. It's remarkable to, to see a, a pastor of a church don't like my car because it had bumper stickers all over it. Never mind to see my front door and the signs around my house, the scripture. Is when I see their laptop and they got that stupid big old. Indian, it looks like he's having a heart attack or the gator and all that, or whatever team they got. Wait a minute, you got your stupid sticker on your computer, but you don't have no. So you're standing more for the college football than you are for. You're the one that's at ball.
other things enter in. Choke the word. So if you got your things in the mindly world and deceitful riches and lust, which Paul says is coveting, Romans 7, I believe, and you got your heart set on things of this world, like Easter eggs and Easter and Christmas and Valentine's and Big Heart Sunday, you just choked the word. Mark 4, 19. I would hate to get to heaven and have the word Jesus Christ said, you choked me. Well, Lord, how do we choke you? Maybe Sunday night you didn't have church service, but you had Super Bowl. Maybe you hurried that message up because your big game was. Maybe you had pagan gods in the church. Maybe paganism showed up. Maybe you had other teachings in what the Bible taught. Maybe you had them say a prayer rather than salvation. Choke the word. And it became unfruitful. Now, this is the first time unfruitfulness has been mentioned out of three. The first one is definitely unfruitful because Satan took the seed. The second was, well, you know, they received it. But because of themselves and because of fence, I'm not going to serve no more. It didn't say they, they were unfruitful. I mean, maybe tell people about you. Maybe they got some gospel tracks. I know people like that. They will give you a gospel track. They just, you know, I can't publicly... They haven't truly denied the Lord, but they denied the Lord in church service, which is the number one sin among Baptists. The unpardonable sin of the Baptist church is you don't come to our church. You know, style, you don't tell people about your church when you preach on the street. That's okay, because I'm down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. I got the Daytona 500. I got the Bikers Week and all that. I mean, hey, you know, you, you should come to my church. Well, that's kind of good. We're from Nebraska. Oh, sorry. Well, you know what my pastor suspects you to do? What? Drive down every weekend from Nebraska and come to our church. That's what, I mean, that's how I took it. <laughs> I will try to find them a home church. This is the first time it says unfruitfulness. So in other words, the cares of the world include sports and drama and television and all that. And the deceitfulness of riches and the lust, which Paul says is also coveting, that does not promote any aspects of the gain of the word of God. How about the deceitful riches and choking the word of God? What about you get a good bunch of people, all kinds of people, scholars and, and whatever you want to get, educators and stuff like that, and maybe Christians, non-Christians, lesbians, uh, what do you get with that? And they get on a board and they rewrite the Bible. And they put a copyright that in order to use over seven to ten verses of their Bible, you need to get their permission. In order to get their permission, you got to pay them. Because unlike the King James Bible, that is not copyright, and I can use the King James Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 without any fee or any charge, God will allow me to use the Word of God. Such crooks in, the, in, in, in this world of Christianity, they will take the Word of God, they will change it so they can get money, and they can promote their lust and their sins. And I guarantee that there's in the works already more gender neutral. Uh, there's no men and women in the Bible. There, there are men, she's, and she men in the Bible. I guarantee someone's working on that Bible today. I mean, they already have a Bible. No, you know, God is not a he, he's a that. Where I think it's Hosea said, it is not God. <laughs> what do they do with that one? But see, you know, another aspect is we need to look at 1 Timothy 6 
1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul writing to a Christian minister. And we could start anywhere, but we'll look at verse 6, 6. 1 Timothy 6, 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, you know that means right there, he with the most is, is godly. That's an Old Testament practice. David was rich because he was godly, a man after God's eye. But today, you know, if you got the most, you got the great, you you got the houses, you got the cars and all that, you got the multitudes of the people in your church, you got mega church, you got you got the airplane church and all that, you're good. God loves you. You're meeting a gazebo? Ew. You're meeting a prison with three people? I had a pastor. Uh, you got, you got, not many people came Thursday night service and all that. I guess you never sat in a living room with just your wife and your two children. Or your father-in-law. But you never did that. For we brought nothing into this world. We come out naked and screaming. No teeth. No hair. Many of us will go out the same way. It is certain we can carry nothing out. You don't carry no U-Haul. All the riches of the pharaohs stayed in the tombs. It's now been grave robbed, and now it's in the museums. It ain't doing the pharaohs no good today at all. And they said they would take their kitty cats. They would kill the kitty cats. They would mummify the kitty cats because cats were, were honored as gods. You killed the cat for nothing. <laughs> They did their servants and all that. You couldn't take them with you. It's always so funny because I studied that kind of stuff. They had all this stuff, and yet they had this little boat, this little boatman riding the river sticks, riding the river, you know, whatever the hell they had, or the afterlife. That wasn't a very big boat to bring all your U uh, haul to bring your stuff into. But for we. Brought nothing into this world, and we certainly carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. Huh. That's not your Baptist church today. Bring them in, bring them in, fill the pews, make me please. Oh, well, I have a car and three car, uh, have a house and three cars in the garage. Paul said he had a he rented a place. He didn't have a house. But we'll keep on moving. But they that will be rich. Paul is writing to Timothy, a minister to Christians. And he says, Timothy, I got a message for you to give to the Christians, and here it is. You ought to be content with food and rendment. That blows the Laodicean church out. The Laodicean church says, we're rich, we're great. And God says, no, no, you're not. You're miserable, naked. With they that will be rich, Christians, fall into temptations in a snare. You mean thorns? Into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drowned men in destruction and perdition. Now Paul says drown. Jesus said the thorn. Now here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You know how we change the Bible? For money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. Money can't do nothing. Whatever. Peso. Americano. Franco, Italiano, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, a man that will love money will destroy his family. A man that loves money will destroy his co-workers. A man that loves money will destroy his business. Which while some coveted, coveted, that's lust, Romans 7, they have erred from the faith. They're written, they're saved. But there's an error. 
and pierced himself with many sorrows. Money is not the answer to Christianity. It is the love of money that causes troubles for those that are in the faith. So back to Mark 4. Such as among thorns, such as hear the word, the cares of the world, the deceitful of riches, the lusts of other things enter and choke the world. It's not just money, it's everything of the world. And, and you see in Christianity and you see in the churches and you see pastors today, especially down here in Florida, oh, it's all the world. A pastor will get up and the only time he'll have a tie is to match the color of his team. You will see a pastor, he closes the Sunday service. There is no Sunday evening service as he's in the fans in the stands of their favorite team. And you'll see, oh, the fact that the, the pastor will put a picture on his Facebook and it's not door knocking, it's not street preaching, it's not passing out gospel tracts, is he's driving a car in the Daytona 500 Speedway. Who I will never leave. You can't force me away. By the end of the year, I'm going to retire and I'm going away. Nothing can drive me from the ministry. Evidently, something is driving you away in your RV. And you asked my daughter. I, I, I told her long before that. I, he wouldn't be here long. There's something about those thorns. That these, uh, if they're Christian, I'm not going to say they're saved or lost, but I'm going to say Christian. If these Christians here, I mean, if they're saved, they're just unfruitful. They're not going to hear well done. Things totally get in the way of the word. It's all about the word. Don't mess with the word. Don't get another word. Stay with the word. The King James 1611 Bible. These are they which sown on good ground, such as hear the word and received it. Okay, they received the word. Look at verse 16. Likewise, these are sown on stony ground. When they heard the word, immediately received it. Is there any difference? I say no. They may have fruit or may not have fruit. It does not say unfruitful. The ones of the thorns are unfruitful. Those are the ones going to have bald heads and glory. No crowns. be kind of funny for those when we get to have, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. It's time to cast it at the feet of G. And you're up there. <laughs> and you ain't going to have a Burger King hat. They received it. And bring forth fruit. All right, so the first group, no fruit at all. There's nothing at all. Definitely. Satan comes along, boom. The second group, they receive it. Persecution. Troubles, they go away, but th there's no mention of fruit at all, but there's nothing to say there is no fruit. The ones that come up with the thorns and the cares and the, and the riches and everything that's worldly, they are unfruitful. But it does not say 18 or 19 either. It does, it does not say receive. Are they saved? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not judging. But verse 20, 
They received it and bring forth fruit. These are the ones going to have the rewards, the crown. I mean, they're going to have ashes too, but they're going to get the crowns. They're going to get the They're going to hear well done. Very few in the lives of seeing church age are going to get this one. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Now look how God puts that together. Because there's some Baptist churches out there, you know. You didn't bring it. You didn't get as many saved as we got saved. <laughs> We had a thousand in Sunday school last weekend. It's not about the numbers. There's the, the, the talents. I think is one God gave 10. He brought 10. That's 100%. Another one I think he gave 10, uh, whatever, 20 or 10. He brought back 10. 100%, 100% is 100% no matter what. And there's a thing, too. The fact is, if you give your heart into it and you try, God's going to reward you. But there is a case where completely unfruitfulness, your mind in the world, riches, and lust. And you know Christians like that. You can say Christians. Christians. 